This presentation is on the Marshall Lerner condition and follows directly from the presentation on the J curve effect. When we were looking at the J curve effect, we saw that time lags can sometimes lead to a variable behaving in the opposite direction to what we would expect. So we saw that in the short run, after a currency depreciates, instead of the trade balance getting better, it can actually get worse before it gets better. This was due to time. But even in the long run, is it always true that a currency depreciation will lead to an improvement in the trade balance? And the answer is no. Even if we wait, the trade balance may not actually move in the direction we want it to, following the change in a currency exchange rate. To see why this is true, we have to look at the price elasticity of demand of a country's exports and imports. In other words, the PED. If the pound, say, depreciates by 20%, our exports will become 20% cheaper for foreigners to buy. But imagine that the price elasticity of demand of UK exports is very inelastic. Imagine it's only 0 0.1. So, let's see what will happen to the volume of UK exports. The price has dropped by 20% because of the currency depreciation. But the Europeans will only buy, the price elasticity is only 0 0.1. So if we multiply 20% by 0 0.1, we get positive 2%. This means that the Europeans will only buy 2% more of UK exports, even though the currency has depreciated by 20%. Let's see what effect this is going to have. Imagine that UK exports used to cost 1 euro for Europeans. And when this was the price, they were buying 100 units of UK exports. So the value of UK exports was 100 euros. Now, following the currency depreciation, the depreciation of the pound, those same exports only cost the Europeans 80 cents because the pound has depreciated by 20%. But the very inelastic nature of exports means that they will only buy 2% more. In other words, they will only buy 102 units. So when you multiply 80 cents by 102, you get 81.6 euro, which shows that in fact the value of UK exports has fallen even though the pound has depreciated. So because of the price elasticity of demand of UK exports being very, very low, the value of UK exports has moved in the opposite direction to what we would expect, following a currency depreciation. We would expect that the value of UK exports would have gone up. Instead, it's gone down. The same, can be, uh, the same analysis can be applied to imports. Imagine that the price elasticity of demand of UK imports was very elastic, say minus 2. If the pound-euro exchange rate is 1 to 1, then 1 euro's worth of imports would cost 1 pound. And imagine we were importing 100 units. So the value of our imports would be 100 pounds. Now, let's say that the pound depreciates against the euro by 20%, so that 1 pound is only worth 80 cents. This would mean that a pound's, a euro's worth of imports would actually cost one pound twenty-five. But because of that price change, and because we are assuming that price elasticity of demand of imports is very elastic, imagine that we would only buy half the number of units of imports as before. This gives uh, a value of 62.5 pounds for our imports. 
So instead of the value of the imports having gone up as a result of the currency depreciation, imports have actually gone down, which is the opposite to what we would expect. So once again, we see that if we choose a certain price elasticity, the value of imports can go in the opposite direction to what we would expect. This led Marshall and Lerner to come up with a rule. And that rule expresses the fact that the effect on the trade balance of a currency depreciation or a currency appreciation depends on the relative elasticity of imports and exports of a country. In fact, the Marshall Lerner condition states that a currency depreciation will improve the trade balance only if the sum of the elasticities of exports and imports is greater than one. Of course, this also works in the opposite direction. So we can say that a currency appreciation will only make the trade balance get worse, will only worsen the trade balance if the sum of the elasticities of exports and imports is greater than one. So this rule, the Marshall Lerner condition, tells us when, under what circumstances, the trade balance will move in the direction we expect it to, following a change in the exchange rate. <laughs>